So in 2006, Petty Officer Mike Monsoor was with SEAL Team 3 on his first deployment. This is his first get-go. He's an FNG, a blank and new guy. First one out the door, right? And he's operating in the most dangerous place of the world. Now, if you guys have forgotten those days, uh, we were, during that time in the Iraq War, we were losing about 100 to 125 people a day, every day in the war. And this place, Al Ramadi, was the worst place on earth. And, but it's a good thing nobody told the SEAL teams because they were kicking the snot out of them, all right? In fact, Mike Monsoor, and just in case you've forgotten also who we were fighting, right before SEAL Team 3 showed up, uh, an al-Qaeda bomb-making cell kidnapped a special needs 14-year-old girl, put a 25-pound explosive vest on her, walked her into a police recruiting line, and detonated her remotely. That's who we're fighting, just so you know, all right? So the SEAL teams were bringing it to those people. And Mike was in particular, in his first deployment, was operating at such a high caliber, such a high standard, that he had already been put in, in the first part of his deployment, put in for the Silver Star, our nation's third highest award, because when they were out on a, on a patrol, they got pinned down, one of his guys got shot up, and in order to get him out of this building that was getting rocketed and smoked, he had to cross the street and get this guy, his buddy had to drag him into this APC, this Armored Personnel Corps carrier. Well, Mike busts out of, the, out of the thing, gets in the middle of the street with his belt-fed machine gun, and just starts going, ba -da 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 -da, taking everybody on by himself, right? That's awesome, right? Exactly what you said. And, and so, <laughs> so, and then that way, his buddy picked him up and dragged his other buddy to safety. So that's how Mike was already performing. Now, towards the end of the deployment of Team 3, Team 5 was coming in, and the task unit commander for 3 raises, it goes to the, the, to the whole team and says, all right, gents, we need some people to volunteer to stay extra time uh, to do turnover with Team 5. How many hands went up, you think, ma'am? All of them, ma'am. Not none, all of them. Remember, this is what we like to do. <laughs> Seems a little odd, I know, but it's what we like to do. So Mike's was one of the first hand that went up, right? Boom! And because he was operating at such a high caliber, he was chosen. Now, this is a new guy, and his first platoon was chosen to stay extra time to teach the Team 5 guys the lay of the land, right? That peer evaluation, that, 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 um, that high energy, right, that you guys talk about on a regular basis. That energy to be involved, to support your teammates, no matter what the cost, right? So he sticks around. So, unfortunately, they went out on a patrol not much longer after that when turnover was going on, and they were... They were in a fight, and they got into fights three-fourths of the times they went out to die, the door in Ramadi at that time, they got into gunfights. And so they were in a gunfight, and they had moved to a, a position on top of this roof. Two snipers were providing overwatch for the other platoon that were trying to maneuver, and Mike was checking their six. He was holding security with them, right, because he was a big belt-fed machine gunner, big dude and all that. So these guys, these snipers were going to town, and unbeknownst to Mike and those guys, an insurgent had seen where they were firing, had snuck up next to the side of that building, pulled out a hand grenade, pulled it, and threw it up, and that thing came right up, boom, and hit Mike on the chest. Now, what I want you to just briefly for a moment, I'll revisit this, late, revisit this later, I want you to think to yourself, what would you do? Mike screamed, grenade out, and jumped on it, and boom! Petty Officer Mike Monsoor took the entirety of that blast in his face and his chest. Now, because Mike was such a hard individual, he lasted for another 35 minutes before he passed away on the medevac bird out. Now, the kicker to this story, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Please, listen. The kicker to this story is there was a stairwell right next to Mike, right next to him. And all he had to do was jump down that stairwell to save his own life, but he didn't. He turned and jumped on the grenade, sacrificing himself so his two brothers could both go home and hug their wives, kiss their children, and fight another day. Folks, we've got fear, period. So what you have to learn to do is embrace it. Truth one. The second one is self-confidence is really important. <laughs> so self-confidence is huge. It's important. And you got to forge it every single day. 
The third one is you got to live with purpose. If you don't have purpose in your life, you don't have momentum. You don't have anything driving you forward, anything pulling you out of bed every single day. You got to understand who am I, why am I here, and what is my reason for living? Purpose. And the last one, and the one I learned <laughs> that left an indelible mark, not only in my heart, but in my soul, on those beaches across the street, street over there, is nobody does it alone. There's not a single person in this whole room right now that can raise their hand and say, you know what, Rut? I've done it by myself. Not a single person out there has helped me, not a one.